All right, when we, uh, <laughs> when we have a, a cylinder, all right, well, we've got, well, we've got the, uh, the top is a circle, and then that, uh, goes down, and then we also have a circle, say it's a congruent circle on the, uh, in, on the, for the base as well. So I've got two circles, top and bottom, then I've got, you know, the, the rest of the can, the rest of the cylinder. Well, on a cylinder, of course, you need the, the radius of the circle, and you need the, uh, the height, how tall the uh, cylinder is. Those are the two things you need to calculate the volume and surface area. All right, now, the way I like to describe where the volume of a cylinder comes from is let's go back to the box here and <clears throat> think about uh, constructing a box in maybe a way we haven't thought about constructing before. But really, what a box is if I take a <clears throat> if I take a rectangle and then um, make it make that rectangle and then make it where it has a height of h or whatever. So I'm going to take an L by W rectangle. So that's, uh, you know, for perspective, I've got a parallelogram, but it's a rectangle, so it's length and width. And so then I just <clears throat> take that rectangle and, and make it a height of H. All right, so kind of constructing a, a, a box like that. Well, the reason I, I take it like that is because the volume, I take the area of that rectangle, multiply it by the height, and that gives me the volume. Well, what is that? Why am I talking about that? Well, the volume over here, <clears throat> I've got a similar situation, except I've got a circle on the top. You with me? So I've got a circle on the top. What's the area of a circle? Pi r squared times the height. Yeah. The reason the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h is because it's the circle multiplied by the height. This area of the circle multiplied by the height just like the box, area of the rectangle times the volume. All right, so that's the volume. Surface area, well, part of the surface area is pretty easy. Surface area, you're just adding up the surfaces. So the top and bottom, again, they're circles. So I've got a pi r squared on the top, I've got a pi r squared on the bottom, so I've got two pi r squareds. <coughs> But that leaves the rest of the cylinder, right? The, the middle part. So I've got to add that in. Well, here's, <clears throat> let's think about that over here. So if I take, uh, take this cylinder and I cut it uh, down uh, one side there and lay it out flat, <clears throat> that turns it into uh, a rectangle, doesn't it? So unroll the, unroll the cylinder out, and it lays out flat. Okay, well, the rectangle here is H for the width. Um, the length, though, of the rectangle, when I lay out that out, isn't the length, wouldn't that be this distance around here, from, from this all the way around, which is circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. the circumference of the circle. So the area of this middle part of the cylinder or can, if you lay it out flat, it's a rectangle. 2 pi r times h. <coughs> and so that's the surface area of a cylinder. All right? So it's just, just a formula you will have to calculate <coughs> some surface areas there. Um, Okay. Now, the cone is uh, related very much to, to the cylinder formulas. There are some adjustments. There. On the cone, you do need the radius, because you got a circle for the uh, base there. And you also need the height, which, you know, tip down to the uh, 
space there. So it's inside here would be probably better. So yeah, you do need a radius and a height for a cone. <clears throat> All right, now, the little uh, tricky part here. So yeah, let's say we had a cylinder this size and then the cone is, has exactly the same radius and height. All right, so we've got a cone and the radius and height are the same as the cylinder. Well, it turns out, <clears throat> you may think, so if I was able to pour, fill this one up and pour it into the cylinder, you may think, well, it would just take two of those cones to fill that cylinder with the same radius and height. But the answer actually is three. It takes three cones to fill the same size radius and height cylinder. It takes three of them. Okay? So, for that reason, the volume of a cone is a third of the volume of a cylinder. One third pi r squared h is the volume of now, they do have us uh, do some surface area of cones, and one of the pieces I can tell you is easy, um, because the bottom is just a circle, so the area of that circle is pi r squared, that makes sense. But getting, you know, the rest of the cone, it's not as nice as a cylinder, but uh, here it is. It's pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared. Yeah, not totally nice, but that's what it is. So let me just do, do one of those to just give you an example. All right, so let's say I've got uh, uh, radius, uh, let's say it's 5, uh, Make it a pretty large cone. We've got a five feet radius, and then my height is uh, eight feet. So the volume, easy enough, it's one third times pi r squared, so it's square five, and then the height is eight, so it's one third pi times five squared times eight. Um, <clears throat> do it however you want. Again, they probably will use. Uh, 3.14 for your pi. Use your pi value to get some, some slightly different. Like I was saying, though, you can multiply those however you want to. You can do the 25 times the 8, and then times the 3.14, and then times the 1 third. It doesn't matter the order there that you do it. Uh, but here's what you should get if you use 3.14 anyway. Two hundred nine point three three. I think they'll do two places if I remember correctly, and that's uh, vo volume so it'd be feet cubed. Two hundred nine point three three feet cubed. All right. Then the surface area is pi r squared. So that'd be pi times five squared plus pi times r. So it'd be pi times five times your square root of r squared, so it'd be 5 squared again, plus h squared, that. Now, <clears throat> yeah, so we do the 3.14 times 25 right here, and then the 3.14 times 5 here, and then square root, that'd be 25 plus 64. The thing I would say about this is, uh, well, let's do so 3.14 times 25 gives me 78.5. 3.14 times 5 gives me 15.7. Uh, yeah, and on these you got to add these before you square root. So add those first, so it would be, uh, what, 89? Square root of 89? Yeah, you can't square root those and then add them. you got to add them and then square root them. So just the way it goes. Um, and then the other thing is, before you add these, multiply comes before add, right? So uh, when we got get it to this, we multiply these first, basically. So that's 148 point. <clears throat> one one. 
two decimal places. So just a couple of things to be careful with there. Is that right? Any uh, plus the 78.5? 226.61, and that's uh, surface area, so that's feet squared. Volume, surface area. Question or concern? So you you need to square the 89. Square root the 89. And then times it by the 15.7. Times it times the 15.7. Before you add. Yeah. I mean, if you have a scientific calculator, if you just enter it in just like that, it'll it'll do it. It'll do the times, but um, but that's that's it's going to do the times first. But, yeah. 